This is Lesson 11.1, Inverse Variation. Your objectives are to identify and use inverse variations and to graph inverse variations. An inverse variation is an equation in the form of y equals k over x, which can also be written x times y equals k. If you have two points x1, y1, and x2, y2 that are solutions of an inverse variation, and since they both equal k when you multiply them together, then they also equal each other when you multiply them together. And that's the product rule for inverse variation. Since x1, y1 equals k, and x2, y2 equals k, since they both equal k, then they both equal each other. You can also turn this into the proportion, which is written incorrectly on your sheet, so rewrite it. x1 over x2 equals y2 over y1. So we could solve questions like this by graphing. We could solve questions like this algebraically. Always pay attention to what they're asking you for. Determine whether each table or equation represents an inverse or a direct variation. If it's a direct variation, it'll be y equals k times x. And if it's inverse variation, it'll be x times y equals k. Let's check each one and see which equation it fits best. Number one is this table. Let's see if it works with inverse variation. For inverse variation, x times y equals k. And k is the same thing each time. So let's see if x times y is the same thing for each one. 3 times 6 is 18. 5 times 10 is 50. 8 times 16 is 128. And 12 times 24 is 288. That was different each time, not the same. So this is not inverse variation. To be inverse variation, those products would need to be the same each time. Let's see if direct variation works instead. Direct variation is y equals k times x. If x times k equals y each time, and k is the same thing, then it'll work. So what times 3 equals 6? That's a 2. What times 5 equals 10? 2. What times 8 equals 16? 2. And what times 12 equals 24? 2. The twos were the same each time, which works. That means that y equals kx does work, because k was the same each time. So this is direct variation. y equals kx worked, xy equals k did not. Number two, y equals 6x. Well, let's test inverse variation. Is this in the form x times y equals k? It doesn't look like it. I'm not multiplying x and y together. I'm multiplying x and 6 together. What about y equals k times x? Well, this definitely looks like it's in that form. We have the y that equals, since k is a number, in this case, it looks like k is 6, and then the x. This is definitely in the form y equals kx. It's direct variation. Number 3, x times y equals 15. Is this in the form xy equals k, or in the form y equals kx? Well, xy equals 15 has x times y, which looks like inverse variation. Let's make sure. We have the x 
times the y equals, and since k is a number, 15 and k, looks like k is 15. This is definitely inverse variation. Assume that y varies inversely as x. Write an inverse variation equation that relates x and y, then solve. If y equals 10 when x equals 5, find y when x equals 2. Well, this is inverse variation, so x, y equals k. And I'm going to use the first half of the question to find k. Substitute in. x is 5 and y is 10 equals k. Solve for k. And k is 50. Now write your inverse variation equation using that k. xy equals k, so xy equals 50. That's the first answer. Then use the second half of the question and answer that. Find y when x equals 2. Well, I'll use my new equation, xy equals 50. I'll substitute 2 in for x and find y. Divide by 2 and y is 25. Use the first half of the question to find k. Write your inverse variation equation and then answer the second half of the question using that equation. Number 5. If y equals 8 when x equals negative 2, find y when x equals 4. Let's use the first half of the question to find k. Use the inverse variation equation, xy equals k, and substitute in x is negative 2, y is 8, equals k. Solve for k, and you get negative 16. So the inverse variation equation will say xy equals negative 16. That's your first answer. Then we'll use that and the second half of the question, and we'll find y xy equals negative 16. Find y when x is 4. Well, substitute 4 in for x. 4 times y equals negative 16. And now solve for y. Divide both sides by 4. y equals negative 4. Use the first half of the question to find k, and then use that k to answer the second half of the question. Number 6. If y equals 100 when x equals 120, find x when y equals 20. Well, let's use the first half of the question to find k and write our inverse variation equation. xy equals k. So x is 120 and y is 100 equals k. Now solve for k. You get 12,000. So your inverse variation equation, xy equals 12,000. Now use the second half of the question and answer it using that new equation. Find x when y equals 20. Well, we know that x times y equals 12,000. If y equals 20, substitute 20 in for y and solve for x. That's x times 20, so divide both sides of the equation by 20, and x equals 600. Use the first half of the question to substitute in and find k, and then use k to answer the second half of the question. Number 10. For a rectangle with a given area, the width of the rectangle varies inversely as the length. If the width of a rectangle is 40 meters when the length is 5 meters, find the width of the rectangle when the length is 20 meters. So notice what it says. The width varies inversely as the length. 
we have inverse variation, which is xy equals k. And since I'm talking about width and length, let's use w and l instead of x and y. So wl equals k. Look at the first half of the question. If the width of the rectangle is 40 meters when the length is 5 meters, we'll substitute in and find k. Let's put in 40 for w, 5 for l equals k, and when you solve for k, k is 200. Well, let's use that k to answer the second half of the question. Find the width of the rectangle when the length is 20 meters. We're still using WL equals K. Now we're looking for W. L is 20 and we just found K which is still 200. Solve for W. Divide both sides by 20 and W is 10 meters. Use the inverse variation equation, find k first, and then use k to answer the second half of the question.